Good afternoon. If this presentation goes well, my name is Sarah Gare, and I'm a suicide prevention specialist with Riverside Trauma Center. If this presentation goes badly, my name is Betty. <laughs> I'm here today to talk to you about the three lies that I believe adults tell kids and why we shouldn't believe them. As a suicide prevention specialist, I spend a tremendous amount of time listening to people talk about their lives, the things that they face, and how they understand the world around them. I've had the great fortune of working with many, many young people and also a lot of adults. And much to my surprise, it turned out that young people and adults view the world very differently. Some of you may already be aware of this. And I've heard over and over, people talk about how they think of young people as being naive and uh, hopefully optimistic about things. Uh, but I started to wonder, what if the kids are actually right? What if the way that they see things is actually true? Of course, the first question I had in my mind is, how could it be possible that so many adults are wrong? And then I thought about the reality that many adults believe that the Earth is flat. Still, many adults believe that the Earth is flat. And then I started to ask, how would it happen that so many adults could come to believe something that's not true? And the more that I thought about it, I thought about certain narratives that we teach to young people and the impressions that they can have from those. And so the first lie that I believe we tell kids is that they're too sensitive. Of course, there's many different definitions for the word sensitive, and the one we think of most often is responding to something emotionally or being too easily impacted. But I can't help but wonder who gets to define what it means to be too easily impacted by something. Is it a young person who defines that, or is it an adult? And the reality is, when I think about the things that hurt young people, it all makes sense to me. Those things are hurtful. If it's being picked on at school, or it's having people not want to be around you, those things are hurtful. And I understand adults often feel that we need to help our kids to be prepared to deal with the difficulties life will hand them. And so we're trying to help them grow a thicker skin, but I'm afraid that sometimes what we're actually doing is hardening their skin. And I think it's important to think about the difference. Little tidbit you may not know, many years ago, a man named Winston Churchill, I'm assuming people are familiar with him, he came to the United States and he said, I'm really concerned about what's happening in Germany. I think that something's wrong. And yet, we didn't listen to him. So another definition for the word sensitive is to be able to pick up on the slightest changes in a stimuli. In my mind, Winston Churchill was able to pick up on a change in a stimuli, and he converted, he informed people that he was seeing that, and we didn't listen to it. So I just wonder how the world might be different if we thought of sensitivity as being a strength instead of thinking of, of it so often as being a weakness for someone. So the first lie is that you're too sensitive. The second lie is that life is not fair. And the reality is there are things that happen in our lives that are not fair. But I'd like to differentiate between what is a natural law and what is a human construct. So one story I'd like to share with you is about a young man that I was very fortunate to have in my life named Ramon. Ramon had been through many, many difficult things and he had actually ended up living with my uncle. My uncle wanted to adopt him. But unfortunately, my uncle was diagnosed with cancer, and that prevented him from being able to take Ramon permanently. That was natural law. It was unfair, but it was a natural law. Years later, Ramon continued to thrive. He was very, very fortunate. He was taken in by another family, and he found himself at Temple University, which was a really big deal for him. But when the headaches first started, he didn't go to the doctor. And the reason he didn't go to the doctor was because he didn't have health insurance. Unfortunately, by the time he went to the doctor, and in fact, he went to the emergency room, the headaches were so severe that he couldn't tolerate the pain anymore. And that's when we learned that Ramon had cancer in his brain. I can't promise you that if that had been caught earlier, it would have saved him. And in fact, it's unlikely that it would have because of the type of cancer he had. But I can't help but believe that if it had been caught sooner, his days would have been longer, and they would have been better. That wasn't just because of natural law. It was also a human construct, which is our healthcare system. Another story is a young woman I had the honor of working with. She was a, a single mother due to a terrible tragedy that had happened, and because of her situation, she had no choice but to be on 
financial aid, including low-income housing and food stamps. And she had been coming for a long time, but therapy wasn't really helping very much. It turned out what she needed was a job. Once she got her job, she started to feel proud of herself. She would come and she would tell me about how great she was doing and how they were talking about giving her more hours and they were talking about asking her to think about having a leadership role. And then one day she came in to see me and I could tell by her face that something was horribly wrong. And I said, what happened? Of course, I'm imagining that something terrible has happened to one of her children or a family member. And she said, Sarah, I had to quit my job. I said, what? Why did you have to quit your job? And she said, because I had to report my income. And when I reported my income, it was too much. And I lost the bulk of my help with my housing and almost all of my food stamps. I literally can't afford to work. This didn't happen to this woman because life is unfair. This happened to this woman because of a human construct that is unfair. It's a system that's supposed to be there to help people work their way out of poverty, and yet all too often, it actually keeps them trapped in it. And so I believe that one of the things we tell people that's really very dangerous is that life is unfair, without differentiating between whether it's a human construct or a natural law. And the third lie that I think that we tell young people is don't dream big, be realistic. And I understand that we do this because we don't want our kids' hearts to be broken when they don't reach a dream that we think is unlikely to happen. But what I've learned in my life is that life will teach those hard lessons all by itself. They don't need us to be the person to deliver the heartbreak. And I think about the little boy who looks up at his dad and says, someday I want to go to Harvard. And his dad says, well, you know, son, you have to have really good grades to go to Harvard. He's going to learn that. Or the little girl who says, you know, someday I want to grow up and be a doctor. And somebody says, you know, you have to have a lot of money and go to school for a really long time. They don't mean to sma smash her dreams, but it is the message that they're giving. I also think about all of the things that have happened in our country for the best. Because somebody had the courage to dream big. I can't help but think about Rosa Parks. Now, maybe we would have still made that progress if she hadn't sat at the front of the bus. But I would argue that we'll never know, and maybe we wouldn't have. We still have a long way to go when it comes to racial justice, but I think about how probably the most powerful speech in American history was, I have a dream. And yet so un often, unbeknownst to us and unintentionally, we say things that discourage people from dreaming. So I would just... Um, sort of be aware of when we do that to kids. So what I'm asking you to do is take these three different ideas together, to take the idea that sensitivity is your strength, that the world could be fair, or at least the things that human beings construct, and that big dreams are our path forward, and ask yourselves, what kind of world could we have if we did that? I often think about one of my favorite songs by John Lennon, and he says, you may think, some may think that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Will you, someday, I hope you will join us. And I hope that you think this is an idea worth sharing. Thank you.